and welcome back. Welcome back to the channel. And I am Batman. I'm not Batman. Um, I'm, I'm in the 911, the 996, 1998, 158,000 miles. Um, I haven't driven it for a while, so I had to do the key thing again where the remote doesn't work because you haven't used it for so long, so you have to do with the key, then the alarm goes on, that. And also, you've probably just realized I haven't changed the wipers yet, but it's probably been what, two weeks since I've driven it. It's always been two weeks since I've driven it. And so the reason I wanted to drive it today was, uh, I'm going on holiday, so probably the time, by the time you see this video, I've probably been, come back. Um, but I wanted to give it a good spin and park it up because I also wanted to do a bit of a compare and contrast because I drove my really awful Boxster this morning. And that was, I say really awful, but it kind of felt all right today. Not because the suspension's still the same. Still made that clicking noise off the time and chain tensioners, which I've got, and I'm gonna include the sale. Um, but it was, it was zippy and it sounded better and it kind of just felt better. But the rev counter stopped working. Uh, so I don't know what that is. Everything else works. All the other dials work, but the rev counter stopped working. Probably something to do with the fact that I'd never use it. And it was in, it'd been in storage for six weeks, I think, or maybe two months. But um, but with this, that and it feels light and zippy, and obviously I, it doesn't feel like uh, a good, well sorted Boxster should feel. Whereas this, and I always think this is quite. This is probably, this is quite crusty, crusty around the edges on the outside. But anyone who's been in it as a passenger said, actually, it's not rattly, it's not shaking, the suspension feels tight, and it's really quite good. The one thing that I would like to do at some point is, obviously it needs a service, um, is the brakes. I think, like I've said before, the front pads might be a little bit warped. Uh, the front pads. Front discs might be a little bit warped when you're going at high speed and you brake firmly. There's a little bit of a jitter, um, and also it, it, it's probably just time. It's probably just time to do it. And the pedal's a bit soft because when I bought it, the brake pipe would burst, and I just don't think they um, bled the brakes properly. And also the bleed nipples are all rounded. So I don't know about the ones behind. Oh, there's someone in a in a brand new Taycan. I see look at me with disdain and disgust or probably go and look at that dude in these super cool 996 and I'll be like you too right I am uh, I don't know why I got this is the stuff that goes on in my brain and most of the time I don't say it out loud um, but anyway the difference so that is, is lighter and zippier whereas this is just a bit it feels a bit more raw I don't know I don't know why I mean that because obviously this one's this got traction control, it's a hard top obviously, but it just feels like it's just got something in terms of just the the noise, how it grips the road, and when you put your foot down, it just feels like it's giving you a real shove in the back. It's a bit more the acceleration just feels a bit more brutal. It's like being in a, a zippy small car. The acceleration is, is is quick, but it's not it does it's not a shove in the back. Whereas with this, it does feel like it's a shove in the back. Um, and and I, I don't know which is better, but I, I for me I prefer this. There's just something a bit more grown up about it. Um, but. I mean, once I am going to try a, a well-sorted, looked-after Boxster at some point, and I actually, I can already tell just from driving mine that they are actually really fun cars to drive. With the top down this morning, you know, really early in the morning, it just felt really good. I should not be driving this car like this because I've literally been driving it for about three minutes after two weeks of just sitting there and I've just revved it to 5,000. Uh, 5,000 is not that bad though. That's kind of normal driving for these cars, right? But it's just, at the same time, I'll tell you what though, there's that whole thing about, you know, be, having power that's usable on the roads. And 
Obviously, I drove my 912 this morning as well. Before I drove the Boxster, I drove my 912. And there's a, there's a little video, I hope you can still see me, I'm under the trees. Um, but there's a little video that I put on Instagram of me driving it and accelerating. And that, I just love it. The thing is, this, this car is like moving around because because I haven't been using it I'll, for two months. I've used it sort of every couple of weeks. And I suspect the tire pressures are all over the place. And that, for a while, I used to think, oh, it's the wheels, the tires, the suspension. It's not, it's the tire pressures. If you've got those wrong, your car will handle or it'll feel like it's not handling properly. Oh, I think that was my neighbor in a scooter. I don't really want to redline it, but well, I do actually, but I shouldn't. I'm doing it anyway. That got there quite quick. Um, but that's what I love about it. And that's why, like I said in one of the previous videos, sometimes I'm just smiling driving it. And it's that you're almost not, not that you're taking it for granted. And I haven't done that thing where this is, I am actually doing that right now, which is, I'm just taking it out for a drive because I missed it. So I drove the other two today, loved the 912. I was surprised by how much I actually quite enjoyed driving the Boxster this morning. Um, but you know, it's not something that I would, I would go out and drive it again and again and again in its current state. I think it might be an expectation level. I might have expected to get in and hate it because of more to do with its condition. Nothing, I, I, I'll be honest, it's got nothing to do with the fact that it's a, it's a Boxster. Because I think the Boxsters, the, the ingredients are just all there for them to be great cars. Um, and I think they are. And just by driving mine that needs all that work and going, actually, this is actually quite fun. But because this one is way more sorted, from a driving point of view, never mind the outside. Um, it's it's just another level, and I think for me, it's not just enough performance. You know, there'll be electric cars that are tiny little boxes that are the future for, to get around. And don't get me wrong, they probably accelerate quicker. They handle better, they're more reliable, they charge quickly, they're more economical, but there's just something about it. And that's the whole thing that I was talking about with Mark on the podcast. It's an experience. Porsche sell you an experience. And I feel like I've, I've got it in abundance in this, in, in, with this car. So, which is fantastic. But with the performance, I feel like it's just the right level. I don't care about being overtaken by somebody. I don't care what someone says about the numbers. It's, it's like when someone says, I can just go out and buy any old car, and not any old car, any car because I've got so much money. So when they say I've got, you know, I've bought a 992 GT3, or what's coming out next, the GT3 R, the GT3 RS, whatever it might be, and they can just go buy it. And I've never driven one. I've never driven a 991, 992, 997. I've not driven anything newer than this. Oh no, uh, as in a 911 newer than this. And um, when that kind of thing where you could just have it and also you're you're driving those cars that drive like any modern car so if I get in it I go I get in it and I go actually it doesn't feel any different to my wife's Golf R did then I'm not experiencing the Porsche thing the Porsche aspect of it so and also there's a hardship to it you know I don't have any money this car is wearing its age and wearing the fact that it gets used. And even when I put my 912 away, I put it back into storage and there was a much better looking sort of slate gray 912 parked next to it. And, but at the same time, it looked really well used. It had brake carbon, um, brake dust on the front wheels. It had muck on the front. It looked like it had driven hard in rain. With the streaks of water up it, <coughs> and I like that. Someone who properly uses it. So, oh, I'm just thinking again now. What am I going to call this video? Back in the 996, I've done loads of those. I've called them, but there's just something about being back in it, and I don't. 
you know, it might be time to revisit the prices. Because, as you know, I bought this one. It's what, 2022, the middle of 2022 now. And I bought this in early 2018. No, 2019, early 2019. And so three and a half years. And in that time, I don't know, but the price has changed? Possibly. Well, they have, but I mean, in the in the time since I last checked, which is probably about a year ago. Have they gone up? I don't know if they have. Everyone's talking about 997, everyone's talking about GT cars, everyone's talking about GT2s, which I think there's a video on the Nine Works. Uh, by Lee Sibley on the Nine Works YouTube channel. Uh, the the GZ2 is just a monster, but just the box standard Carrera 2, which nobody wants, it's never going to be worth anything unless you know it's got zero miles on it and it looks like it just came out of the factory. But where's the fun in that? That's. I don't know. I, yes, I would go and look at If this car was in the garage, I, if I had a garage, I would go and look at it because I like the way it looks. But it's not that I like the way a no like the story of my car. That's why I look at it, when I look at it, I see the story. So, and, and my 912, obviously I think that's a gorgeous looking car, without the same story as this one. But I would go and look at that. But would I have a car that has no mileage on it and that just sits in the garage and the the, the fun or the satisfaction is actually owning something like that where it's a 24 year old car but it looks like it's brand new out of the factory I don't know anyway I've rambled on what I wanted to say was it, it's still my favourite car the 912 is close I love the 912 I love driving it I get, this is gonna sound weird, but I do get tired driving the 912 because when I drove it, admittedly I didn't sleep that night, but when I drove it to the classic Porsche event and it was sort of an hour and something each way, I did get tired on the way back. It was a hot day as well. Second gear, beans. Just over 7,000 RPM. I didn't want to run out of petrol either. That third gear is so long. And you know when you're in fourth, and you just put your foot down, and it just gives you that satisfaction. Um, it, yeah. Anyway, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for putting up with my aimless rambling. And let's have some cool guests in the future on the Porsche Talk podcast where hopefully, you know, you'll be entertained. Um, and if you do listen to it, please give us a review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify or wherever you listen to it. Um, actually, Apple Podcasts is probably the best place to give us a review. And that's where we look, or I look anyway. And hopefully I'll catch you on the next video. Thank you.